Is this thing on? Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to episode one of Pain Therapy. Amazing, so exciting, best day of my life. It's gonna be the best day of yours too, I hope anyway. I am gonna try to do these videos on a monthly basis, so if you have an idea or a suggestion for next month's Pain Therapy video, go ahead and drop it in the comments below. I love comments, and leave me your feedback. Let me know what your favorite part of the video was and what you can live without next time, because I really do listen. I just wanna make a video that you guys are gonna love, enjoy, and keep coming back for, so give me the feedback. This is a painting that I wanted to paint for a really, really long time. I'm titling this painting, When Climates Collide. I can't really think of any better description. Uh, Snow-capped mountains viewed from the beach, and it really is a perfect picture of when climates just collide. The completed painting is actually right behind me, already hung it up, but it came out great. I do give you some helpful tips and tricks all throughout the video. I want this video to be a video where not only you can come for painting tips and to see a cool painting tutorial and paint along with me, I hope this video is a type of video that you can just turn on and enjoy. FYI, I did you all a huge favor. I know it's a pretty long video. I know, I know, I know. I'm gonna try to keep it a little bit shorter next time, but this was, you know, the first one and I was, you know, working out all the kinks. I am going to be putting in the description box down below the timeline for the video. So if you're coming to my video to see specifically how to paint, you know, the ocean, mountains, hills, rocks, etc., there will be a timeline down below in the description so you can find exactly where what you want to see starts and you can skip all the mishigas and just get to what you came for. You're welcome. I love you all. My name's Johnny and this is Paint Therapy, episode one. So I do have a photo for inspiration and I'm gonna put that in the video like right, you know, here someplace, maybe it's over my face, I don't know, but it's gonna be right here so you can see what I'm talking about. I'm gonna make it really simple. I'm not gonna have all the little buildings and all like the, the man-made kind of stuff in there. I want this to be a really simple, easy, breezy kind of a painting for you guys. So that way, if you guys wanna paint this, you guys can kind of paint along and it'd be easy. And to be totally real with you, I'm not that great at those kind of details either, so. We're just gonna get all that out of the way and keep it really natural, so let's get started. So the first thing I'm actually doing, guys, is I'm going to be putting a piece of tape right across the middle here. That's gonna be my horizon line. It's kind of like a cheat code, but you know, who cares? I'm here to have fun, so that's what I'm doing. That is perfect, guys. So I did keep the line a little bit lower than just the middle, just because most of this portrait is going to be of these mountains with the snow in the back and then our regular green rolling hills in the front and then you'll see our ocean, our beach front right here in the bottom. So that's what I'm doing. First, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and do our sky. Love doing the sky. The brush I'm gonna be using, it's actually brand new just for you guys. So I did get the soft version of the one inch brush at Michael's. By the way, it's 2.5 centimeters for you weirdos that like the centimeters, whatever, one inch. So I'm gonna do the top layer, go down a layer, go down a layer, and I'm gonna slowly be transitioning the color from darker to lighter because when you're looking at the sky, it goes from darker up top, whatever the color is, you know, if it's a clear day, whatever the color it is, it's blue. But it's going to be my darkest or deepest shade of blue up top, and I'm going to bring it all the way down into almost pretty much a white at the tip of the horizon for the mountains and stuff like that. Let's get going. So I'm going to be using my just primary blue. I just picked up this blue because the blue I had was kind of going bad. Let's smack some of that on this plate. Beautiful. Just off to the side of my plate, I'm gonna go ahead and put some white, titanium white, by the way. Yes, the different whites do matter. So this is kind of the shade of blue I got when I mixed my just normal blue with my white. This is kind of the tone I'm looking for to start. It can be whatever colors you want, but this is what I'm feeling, what I'm vibing with right now. So this is the shade that I'm going with. And then now what I'm gonna do, guys, is just go ahead and start doing the whole top of the canvas. And you do want this to be, you know, a pretty decently thick coat because you're gonna be doing blending. And if you're gonna be doing blending, you want more paint because you want to be able to blend it around and change the tone of it. That's a huge part of this. So you do want to be generous with the paint you're putting on the canvas in these spots that you're blending. And remember guys, skies are not perfect. So, you know, skies are totally unique in every single way, every single second of every single day. So you can't possibly do this wrong. This is one of those completely fail-proof parts of this painting. Now I am just adding a little bit more white to my palette here and I'm gonna start bringing some more white into my blue because I'm going to start changing the color. It's gonna start to get lighter. Now follow me. Remember, we want it to transition, we want it to fade into this newer blue. And so as I bring the lighter shade in, I'm just carrying it up to my earlier shade which blends it together and gives it a nice fade. See how 
how we're getting even lighter now at the bottom. That's exactly what we want. Now we're almost done with the sky, guys. So now just at the very last bit of horizon here, or of sky here that's, that's showing in this painting, we're gonna go back in again. We're gonna even take just a little tiny bit of like just white for the very, very base of it. Now this is great guys. This is exactly what I was looking for. It's just a totally normal, natural looking blue sky of that, you know, faded kind of thin cloudy haze that we see here in Southern California. This came out great. If you guys got anything close to this, you're totally going in the right direction. Colors that I put aside to do these mountain peaks, really simple, really easy, just three, kind of, sort of, four. I've got my blue base right in the middle. I do have a little bit of black, some burnt umber, which is my brown that I'm using, and I do have a little tiny bit of titanium white over here for the bottom, because what we're going to be doing is the mountains are going to be fading from darker at the top to lighter at the bottom, and that's to signify the fog kind of rolling through. Remember, these are snowy mountains that are thousands of feet up in elevation, and we want it to look that way. Let's go. Okay guys, so I'm using a putty knife right now. This is definitely essential for this. What I'm doing is so that combination of those three different colors so far, I've just used the blue, the black, and the burnt umber brown, and I've mixed that up. You do want it to be pretty dark. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and load, you know, just a decent amount, not too much, but you know, a decent amount of paint on your putty knife there, just like that. And you wanna lightly, almost like you're not even touching the canvas, but you're letting the paint touch the canvas go ahead and do your mountain peaks you know just like that and it's okay if the color is sporadic it's okay if it's not how you think it should look because this is not what it's supposed to look like this is just how we start it you know just like that guys like that one was wow good job Johnny that was a perfect one and you can kind of see you know by the triangular tip of this why it's good for mountain peaks like this Alrighty guys, I got the one inch brush back out. Now that we've done those peaks, it's time to blend them and bring them to the ground. Alrighty guys, so now that I've got the one inch brush back out, I did add a little bit of that white that we talked about over into the color that I had left from my mountain peaks. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do this. I'm just gonna pull, pull it down to the ground. You're gonna want to definitely do this in some different directions for sure. Because remember, these are mountain peaks that go in all types of different directions, so that's what we want. And you can definitely pull some of your darker colors back in, you know, if you need a little bit more fuel. It's just important that your base, you know, towards the bottom is definitely lighter than it is at the top, but as long as you can accomplish that, then you've done perfectly. And guys, the top is really your most important part. This is gonna be blended and taken care of, so don't worry about the bottom. Make sure you're keeping your top nice and sharp. And now I'm just kind of trying to unload all this paint over here on the kind of thicker part of my mountains here, just because I'm gonna be bringing a lot of white into the base of it, and I need a lot of paint to help me blend that white in. Titanium white coming in. Okay guys, so now that we've got our mountain pretty much silhouette filled in and good to go, awesome. Uh, I'm gonna pull out my painting tray again and I'm gonna pull out my putty knife again. Now I'm gonna be doing the snow on the mountain. It's amazing how things like this can create such vivid imagery. It's really awesome. What I'm gonna be doing to start is I'm gonna be actually going in with just straight up titanium white. I'm not gonna be mixing or blending with anything else right now. I just put a tiny little bit of my titanium white on my palette here. Just sliced through a little bit and there's our titanium white. Now what we're gonna be doing is actually going in here, guys, and we're going to like that, just that, that's all we're gonna be doing. That kind of exact kind of a thing. And I know that one doesn't really look like it means much or does much, and that's okay. All we're gonna do is go like this, just like that. And you see how it separates and does that right there? That's exactly, guys, what we want. Finding my next big peak and just going like this.
If you are watching this, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. This is a really good time because I always forget, guys. Uh, to let you know, if you like this video, if you like my channel, go ahead and subscribe right now. I appreciate every subscription. Like, you have no idea. It makes my heart melt. <laughs> makes my heart melt. <laughs> Tap the like button and go ahead and hit the notification bell so that way the next time paint therapy comes out, you can be the first one to watch it. Hey guys, I'm just gonna go ahead and keep doing what I'm doing here. And you'll get the hang of this movement. It's kind of like a three point movement with your wrist, with your shoulder, with your elbow, and you will get the hang of it. It does take some time, guys. I'm not gonna lie to you, but you will get the hang of it. Believe you me. <laughs> It's amazing how things that you wouldn't think make something, make something incredible. One of the things that I love about painting is like anyone can make anything they could even possibly imagine and it's gonna look perfect. And it's just all so amazing. I really love painting. I've always loved it for pretty much as long as I can remember. When I was younger, I had my grandfather actually who was kind enough to show me how to paint and painted with me, you know, for fun. I really do think it all stems from that. I think that was just such an amazing memory I had and I have this joy of painting now and I'm so grateful that I got to have those memories with my grandfather. Love you, Gramps. Look at me now. <laughs> You do have to keep your perspective in mind, guys, because we're gonna be doing the white for the sides of the mountains that are going or facing one direction, and then we're gonna be doing a kind of bluish, coldish color for the mountains that are facing the other direction because the light is only facing one direction, so the color is gonna be different. And this is the kind of stuff that you need to think about when you think of perspective. And this is why, uh, you know, I chose to have a reference photo to look at because it makes a huge, huge difference. So now that you can see, I did pull over a lot of extra black because I've got some plans for more snow as the painting goes on. This is really just the basics that we're at right now. So do not feel off or feel intimidated by your painting in any way, shape or form. It's your painting. And this is one place where you are truly in control. Now, the next two brushes I'm gonna pull out are actually two pretty small brushes. They are actually one quarter inch angled brushes. And the reason I'm pulling these out is because I'm going to start filling in the lines up top to make my mountain peaks a lot more sharp and clear. So that's what we're going to be doing right now. So I'm actually going to start with the white first. So I do have a little bit of white in my tray here on my palette and I'm just going to go ahead and dip just a little tiny bit because remember we're working with very small areas when you have brushes that are this small and you don't want it to get into your beautiful sky that you made. Well, let's make our first stroke. What I'm doing is I'm just going ahead and where there's snow I'm just lining it up so it's nice and even and it can still be rocky and you know you don't want it to be perfectly straight obviously because that's not how mountains are obviously <laughs> you do just want it to be clean and clean cut so that way you don't have kind of specks kind of up in the air and you can drag you know a little tiny bit of it down so it blends a little bit better into your snow that's currently on the mountain And this is so important to you guys when the different colors of the mountain peaks meet. You want it to be crystal clear that the direction of the mountain is changing. And when it's changing, sun looks different, light looks different, color looks different because of the perspective. Perspective. And you're just going to be tapping really lightly, by the way, guys. Remember, this is not like a pen that you're putting an imprint into a paper with. This is you're covering a blank canvas with your beautiful colors. This part is gonna be so much fun. I always love using this kind of brush, even though it's not really a brush, it's actually a sponge. Um, you can buy this at the local craft store. It is literally like natural sponge. It's really, really amazing for getting some really natural looking, incredible details. So I'm gonna be using it for a little bit of light dusted snow on the darker sides of my mountains to get you that little bit of a pop, but while maintaining and retaining that darker color at the base. So that way we can still keep the perspective the way we want, but this will Give you that eye popping snow color. It comes in all different size pieces. I just picked off a small piece. You do want to get it wet a little bit and then once it's pretty much slightly damp then you want to dip in just the tiniest, the tiniest, okay guys, drop of white. You don't want to over dip. It will ruin your painting if you put too much back on there. So what I recommend to all of you is go ahead and get a paper towel, get a paper plate and play around with it a little bit before you start taking it to your painting. Let's go. 
So a really good way, guys, to figure out how much of this you need is to just actually dab a little bit of it on your hand. So you see the little tiny white specks that we've got there? That's exactly what we want, and that's what we're gonna do on our painting. Just gently dabbing, you know, and like I said, I'm doing this like on the darker sides of the mountains, and you'll get the hang of it, you know? You'll get an idea about how much pressure you're using and what works for you and what doesn't, and then you'll just replicate it over and over and over again. Just dabbing a little bit on my wrist here, on my hand, I should say, and then testing it out on a more blank spot. These are painting hands, guys. <laughs> and bringing it back in. Up close, it's gonna look really grainy, but as soon as you take a step back, you're gonna be like, wow, that's awesome. I did that? Yes, you did. <laughs> cool trick for this specific painting is that, you know, obviously the most snow is going to be at the top of the mountain. The least amount of snow, if any at all, is going to be at the bottom. And that's because of the elevation, the temperature, that kind of a thing. So take advantage of when you're using this sponge to highlight and focus the depth up top where most of the snow would be and wing yourself off of it as you get closer to the bottom. So that way you can see the temperature change as well. Whole new level of perspective, okay? <laughs> So now I'm about to start the ridges and the hilltops for the hills that are going to be in front of this gigantic mountain that we just painted. Pick up your paintbrush and get ready. We are going to be using a totally different brush this time, another flat brush, but this time we're going to be using a three quarter of an inch brush just because these hills are going to be obviously so much smaller than the ginormous mountain that we have in the back. So that's why you need the smaller brush. Now the colors you're going to be using for this, you're going to pick out right now and put in your uh, palette here. So I'm going to be using a green, obviously this is the that green that I can't really pronounce. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm not even gonna, I'm not gonna try. I'm not gonna try, guys. Not worth it. Anyways, it's green. So get a good green. Forest green is great. This is kind of like a cross between regular green and forest green. So not quite as dark as forest green, but we have black and we can make it a little bit darker. So I'm gonna be going ahead and putting just a little tiny bit of that in there. Mars Black, my basics brand again by Liquitech. Love that brand. And now we are gonna be using some more titanium white. So I did run out of my other titanium white. Here is a little odds and ends bit of titanium white. No one saw that. Here is a little bit of odds and ends of titanium white that I'm going to be putting in here. Now this brand is actually, interesting name, Dick Blick. <laughs> well, whatever it is, this is what we're using. So then I'm just gonna be putting a little tiny bit of titanium white in my next little tray right there. We will also want a little bit of brown. Brown is definitely something that we're gonna wanna use. Just a tiny, tiny smidge of yellow. I'm using cadmium yellow. Actually, you know what? I've decided I'm actually gonna be using the Dick Blick brand, Yellow Oxide. This is kind of more of like a mustard color. That's a little bit brighter. I want this to be really earthy, more natural looking, and I feel like the mustard color Color does a better job of that. So that's why I'm using that. And again, this one is called Yellow Oxide. Okay, so now that we have our palette all put together, these are all the colors you're gonna need to do these rolling hills. You can also make a lot of your colors, guys. Look up a color wheel, figure out what you need. Um, and if you don't have something, see if you can make it with colors you do have. I'm gonna pull some of my green, definitely some brown. And that kind of makes that immediately kind of like a foresty green. Just a touch of black to add a little bit more depth to that color. We'll add just a touch. The mustard color is kind of thick. Putty knife just to grab a little bit of that. Pull that back over and start blending that. And you see how thick it is, how much it changes the color. Very rich color, the yellow oxide. So grateful that I have that today. So now I'm gonna go ahead and start my ridge. <music> Guys, I'm just starting mine from the left and this is kind of the shape I'm making mine, but you guys can make yours whatever shapes, whatever directions you want. You want a generous amount of paint on here just because we're going to be doing a lot of blending with these hills as well, as I was saying. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab a little tiny bit more of the yellow mustard color. Dash of your white. You're going to just go towards the base of the ridge that you created. Start blending that up with the darker green that you started with up top of your hill. Okay, grab a little tiny bit more white. 
And you can see how it goes from that darker green all the way down to this lighter foresty type green. That's exactly what we want. And don't worry about the bottom of it right now. That's all going to be covered by a different hill. All right, so now that we've got that one kind of doing what we need it to do, we're going to start our next one. So we're going to pull some more forest green on there. We're going to redo the whole thing all over again now. And there's our darker forest green color again, guys. And remember, get a nice thick layer of the dark green here, our dark green concoction. We are going to pull a little bit more of that yellow oxide in. I love that yellow oxide. I'm going to keep saying I love this yellow oxide. It makes such a huge difference. Some white and just dive on in guys. More white in there and you see that color start to change there? Beautiful. That's exactly what we want. <laughs> So the next step is put some detail and fill in these hills. These hills definitely need a little bit more life, I'm sorry, a lot more life to them before we're going to be done with them. So I did lay out some new colors for the palette that we're going to be using. I do obviously have good old titanium white. I've got my Mars black, I've got I can't pronounce it green, I've got yellow oxide, I also have the regular yellow which is the cadmium yellow. And then I do have my burnt umber brown, those are the colors that I'm going to be using for the detail on these hills. Let's dive in. And the brush I'm going to be using is going to be my small, narrow, angled brush again that we used earlier. Just because the hills in the very back area here, those details are going to be a lot smaller than the details in the front hills over here. So that's why I'm starting off with this really tiny, small brush. So I'm going to go ahead and bring some of my green in there. That's obviously going to be the base for all this. Just like a drop of black, some brown. And actually, I think that's a good starting color. Yes, I'm feeling this. So I'm going to pick up a little tiny bit on my brush and just start playing with it guys. And what I'm doing is just really tiny little trees basically and I'll show you up close so you can see what I'm talking about. So when I say I'm doing little tiny trees I'm basically just doing that, 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 but there is going to be some directional intake to it. So I'm going to be doing it in certain directions, but this is basically all I'm doing. Really easy, really simple. You can do this. And there is no science to it, guys. You just do whatever you think looks good. Need some coffee. Alrighty, so I'm having so much fun guys. I hope you guys are having fun too. So now I did go ahead and do the hills in the back that are further away from us, kind of in between those snowy mountains in the back and our foothills in the front. I did go ahead and put the lining of the ridge there with all the little trees and stuff like that to add some definition. So now I'm going to start going in and lightening up the colors a little bit and mixing all different color vegetation in on those back hills and let it blend together and let it pop out at you with all the different colors. It's gonna look so great. Watch me do this and then replicate it for yourself. Okay guys, so I want you guys to see how I have started adding different colors and different sets of trees. And I want you to pay attention to the way I'm organizing them on these hills. The way they're kind of going in different directions, but all kind of like at an angle to some degree. Well, that's because the hills go up, they go down, and they go at an angle, you know? What I want is to give the impression that these trees are going in the direction the hill is rolling. I want you to see this and say, okay, these trees are going that way because the hill is going down. And that's exactly what we're doing right now with these details. And that's the point of the different colors, the different sizes, and all of the perspective tips I've been telling you about. Alrighty guys, so I have gone ahead and made a new color. It's a lot lighter. I did pull finally a little bit of white into my greens and my blacks and my browns and my yellows. Really lit it up a lot. That's the first sample of it on my painting. And I'm going to be using these to frame the lighting on these hills. I'm going to be using this color and other lighter colors I'm going to make to frame the angle the sun is hitting these hills and this mountain now. It's really important. Obviously, it really doesn't matter. It's about what you want and what you think is going to look best. I want this to look as realistic as possible, so that's what I'm going for. But then again, like I said, you can do any color, any direction, and anything you want, and it will be beautiful. And remember, guys, just very small little taps. That's all you need is small taps in that direction, holding that brush at this angle, straight up like I was saying. So the angle of it is flat to the canvas. That's how I do it. Okay, guys. 
guys. So next, one of the things that is gonna make this painting look a lot more realistic and a lot more accurate, but unfortunately, it's dead plants. You need some dead brush on these hills to make them look real. So I did make a kind of dead looking color. I added a lot of my burnt umber brown in there to kind of make it dead. And I will be doing probably the least amount of trees in this color. And so what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be using this on the dark sides of my hills, whereas I used my lighter color on my brighter side of my hills. Alrighty guys, so now I'm using a new brush. I am actually gonna be using pretty much one of the tiniest brushes I have in my painting belt here. By the way, in case you guys were wondering, these brushes are made by Handmade Modern. I really like this brush set, having such a blast with them so far. Just in case you were curious and wanted to check them out or needed any new brushes, these are a great brush set. So I am going to be using this tiny ass brush to do some more details in those back hills back there. Now, what I'm gonna be doing this time is tiny little squiggles. So this time, instead of trees, I'm gonna be doing things just like like that kind of. It's gonna be very, very tiny. It's just supposed to symbolize, you know, loose and moved dirt on these hills. And when the painting is said and done, it makes a huge difference. Now guys, I'm actually just adding a little bit of a gray. I just went ahead and mixed my titanium white with the Mars black, got my gray, pretty straightforward. I'm gonna be doing little dots of that just to uh, create the illusion of small rocks all over the hills. So now it's time to tackle the hills that are in the front of our painting. So we're gonna actually keep the same brush, same color going for right now, totally same. All we're gonna be doing is actually doing the outline on the top of the ridge like we did in the hills in the back um, with this darker green color that we were just using. After we do that ridge outline like we did before, then we're gonna do some squiggles because now we're closer, it's easier for us to see, so we need to do our detail a little bit better. We need to step up our detail game a little bit. We're gonna be doing some slight squiggles with all different kinds of shades. All going in the different directions that the hills and the land is kind of falling in, then we'll be putting our vegetation details over that. And that's going to create an incredibly different dynamic with all the nature in these hills. These hills in real life go in all different directions and are just wild. So it's important that we represent that fairly right here in this painting. Hey guys, so how's it? Take two. <laughs> okay guys, so as you can see, I did start adding those details to my front hills. I am so excited. It really is coming out incredible, as you can see. I did go ahead and start bringing those trees down a little bit into the sides of these hills, and I bet you were wondering why. So the reason I'm doing that is that now that we're so much closer to these hills, there's just so much more we can see. And I like it because it adds that definition, you know, and it kind of adds a direction that the hills are kind of falling in, that the hills are kind of sliding, and that's what you want. So it's a really good guide. It's a really good strong foundation to the direction of your hills and the path of your hills. Now I'm using actually my small mop brush and it's a very small brush, okay? The mop brush is like a flat brush except it's a little bit thicker in the center and it's got a rounded tip and that's good for, you know, washing. <laughs> that's what I'm using for my squiggles which are kind of like a little bit of a wash. That will help me get some more definition, get some more of that detailed kind of dirt, rocks, debris that the hills have. Let's get going. So I am getting ready to go in with this mustardy dark brown here with my small mop brush to do my squiggles in between all my little trees that are coming down the hill. This is the kind of motion I'm going to be using when I am doing this. I'm just using barely any pressure at all to just kind of create these very faded squiggles like that that come down. Now that's going to create the illusion that everything is going in the down direction, which obviously is what we want, but this is a flat canvas. So that's why I say illusion and you're going to keep doing this throughout the front of these hills and it will really pull it together. Now it's time for the big cojona of details. More trees. Love trees. Um, so we're back with the, uh, what is this called again? So we are back with the angled one quarter inch brush, angled, huge deal. Remember, that angle is flat on this canvas and it makes the perfect trees for you guys and it's very comfortable to do it that way. So that's why I use this brush. I have actually literally called this brush the tree brush in my past two videos where I did paintings, the tree brush. This is the tree brush, it's back. Here we are, we're gonna do our trees. Get ready, get comfortable, 
because this is where your hills are gonna really come together. Here we are with the tree brush, with our color that we're gonna be starting with. We're gonna do a lot of different color trees, obviously. I mean, they're all gonna be some kind of green, but all different shades. This is what I'm starting with. It's kind of like a middle, most common kind of a green with a little bit more of a dark tint to it. I did throw a little bit more yellow oxide in there, just a drop with a drop of black. And now we've got this beautiful, almost like dark emerald color. And that's what we're gonna be starting with. Let's go. Well, that's it for the top half of this painting. It's time to go ahead and peel off this separating piece of tape here. Love a clean line like that. back to finish this painting with you guys today. It has been so much fun. I am so happy that I allocated the time to do this this week. It really made my weekend. Thank you so much to anyone who is watching this video, clicked on this video, and likes this video. Y'all are all stars, okay? Thank you. We left off with finishing our hills, the front, the middle, and we did our mountains in the back and our sky. Came out amazing. You guys did fantastic, I'm sure. Now, today is all about doing the beach side of it. We're doing PCH, we're doing sandy foresty type of theme, you know, where if you're at the beach and you've got some greens growing out of the sand, some seagrass, some things like that, we're gonna fade it into the sand and then we're gonna do our ocean. It's gonna be incredible. So it's a really cool painting painting uh, where climates collide. And that's what I'm going to call this painting, if I didn't mention that already, is when climates collide. That's one of the magical things about here in Southern California, that you can go surfing in the morning and go skiing by 3 p.m. It's really wild. I would never do such a thing, but it's wild. <laughs> so now, if you look at my canvas, you can see that I do have, well, I did stencil in a little bit freehandedly with, well, not freehandedly, I did use <laughs> a ruler. Guys, I can't draw a straight line. Never could, still can't. Is that a thing? I don't know. Anyways, I did go ahead and put in my outline for, this is gonna be PCH, this line right here, this block right here, this is gonna be the road. And we're gonna do that obviously, you know, in pavement color, that kind of a thing. Now that gap between PCH and the, our hills that we did um, is gonna be more greenery, more vegetation, but a little bit flatter. We wanna signify that now the hills have come down to, you know, ground or sea level, and we are looking at merging into the beach now. So we do need it to be a little bit more level, a little bit flatter, so we're going to be doing that uh, before we do PCH. And then also before we do PCH, we're going to start doing the vegetation down here on the beach side of PCH. Now if you can see, I'm not sure if you can with the camera, but if you can see um, the little outline I did right here that's kind of random and just all over the place. Now, if you look at a beach that does go kind of from vegetation into sand into ocean, you do see where it kind of fades out, you know, from vegetation to sand, because we all know that certain plants can't just grow in sand that can grow on our hills that we painted. So we need to fade that out and symbolize and signify that transition. This is kind of, if you look at a beach, you know, I look at them all the time, obviously. So you can kind of see how that kind of fades out. The vegetation gets more sporadic and goes in random different directions until the sand is just too dominant and overpowers it and then you don't have any more vegetation. I do have my palette lined up for the little strip of greenery that we're going to be doing before PCH. I do have my, I can't pronounce it, green, my yellow oxide, my brown, my black, and my white. And that's all I'm going to need for this one. So it's a really small strip of area as you guys have seen. This one we want to be not so all over the place. This one we really want the lines to be pretty fine. We don't want to come over into our PCH and we don't want to go back over our hills with paint. So we need to take our time, be patient, and just have fun with it. So after you get that first block up top above PCH totally filled in, and again, remember, there's gonna be a lot of vegetation all over that. So if there's empty little white specks that you didn't get paint on in there someplace, that's okay. Don't be super anal about it. Don't go crazy over it. It's all gonna be covered with vegetation. So it's okay if you miss a couple little spots. As long as you just don't go over the lines and go into your hills, that's really the biggest thing right now. I actually want you to do the same thing for this bottom area right here that we did in this weird ass, kind of crazy shape. 
and do it basically, you know, don't go crazy. It doesn't have to be exactly the shape you drew because again, we're gonna be adding vegetation after the fact. So just get the color on the canvas and you're good to go for right now, guys. So now that we've got our greenery that's on the sand side of the road all filled in for the most part right now, we're on to the next step. Now this is one of those times where we're gonna kind of go what seems like out of order with our painting, okay? And it's all because of our details later on in this video. I am going to start working on the ocean actually right now. And then what we're gonna be doing is blending that ocean up into the sand, up into the wet sand and then into the dry sand. Then we can get going with our road and our details. And then we're like done, guys, wow. I did go ahead and set some colors aside. So I have my titanium white, obviously. You might not be able to see it on this paper plate because I've got other paint from yesterday that's old on here, but whatever, balling on a budget. I do have my titanium white up here. Uh, I do have burnt umber brown. I've got my yellow oxide again. Now I'm bringing in some new colors, guys. Ready for this? So I've got ultramarine blue. Before I was just using primary blue, a typical normal kind of blue. This is ultramarine blue. So this is kind of like a more marine life, ocean type of blue, which is very important important for this. And I also have ultra aqua green, which is this light, like turquoise, this green, tur excuse me, turquoise, it, excuse me, turquoise, ish <laughs> green uh, and that's going to be really helpful for getting us that incredible eye popping color as we get closer to the coastline so i'm going to start blending up some colors right now and start putting on this canvas okay so i want you guys to think about this just the same way we did about the sky except it's going to be backwards okay so we're going to do darker at the base fade into a lighter color and then obviously we'll have our white waves breaking coastline type of thing and then we'll mix in a couple random specks of white here and there to blend in to give that impression that there's waves breaking in random places by the way, I'm using my one inch brush for this for this because I'm blending guys. Gonna grab just a touch of water on the tip of my brush when I'm blending, just straight from my wash pretty much. That's gonna help the blending blend a lot easier, a lot better and look more organic. So that's why I'm doing that. I'm gonna dip into my colors here. We're almost there with our base color, but I'm just gonna take just a drop right now of that ultra aqua green, which really just changes the color totally to a more oceany type of color. And that's exactly what we want. And remember guys to do a thick coat because we're blending and we want a lot of extra paint to work with. I have to tell you this quick before the paint dries and I have to get back to this painting, but now we're gonna be blending into the wet sand color and you can determine the wet sand color all on your own. You can see what I'm gonna do. Uh, I think mine's a pretty generic wet sand color. Do whatever makes you happy. Make your sand green if you want. It's your painting. Let's go. So I did do pretty much most of the details I need for that back section of the grass on the other side of our road there. Now I'm actually going to take my tiny teeny brush. What brush is this? I can never remember. Oh, the good old small mop brush. I'm using that with just basically some like dirt color, like some sandy kind of dirt color that I made. And I'm going very carefully along just the tiniest bit of the edge of the road on both sides of the road. I'm doing that because, you know, really Realistically, between the grass and the road, there's a little bit of dirt. The vegetation starts to kind of die off as it approaches that pavement, that cement. So that's the impression I want to give, and that's what I hope to portray to the viewer of the painting. I'm going to be doing basically just all along the tiny little cut here in between the grass and the road, and I'm going to do that on both sides. Okay, so that's what I'm doing. It's going to make this painting pop, guys. All these details do, so it's all worth it. Same color going, same brush. 
brush and I'm actually going to start filling in just a little bit outside of the area of the greenery we did on this side of the road. Just a little bit, nothing crazy. It's just going to help us a lot later on with perspective. Just do this, just like what I'm doing right now. All I'm doing is just a tiny little bit at a time. You know, you just want to get that color in there is really all you want to do. We want the impression that this grassy vegetation is coming out onto the beach and as it turns into the sand, it kind of slides around and kind of stops growing and dies off. I think this color that we're using does a really good job of portraying that for me. Just doing that really quickly with a small wash brush really gave some elevation. Now you can look at it and say, oh, this is kind of elevated from the sand. That's exactly what we want. I'm actually gonna take a little bit of a darker brown with an even smaller brush. I'm just gonna use this darker brown color to make some rocks inside of those cliffy areas. So just kind of like that. Now we're getting into the details for the grass on top of those cliffs that we just made. That came out amazing, by the way, just in case you couldn't tell. So I've got my sponge back, guys, my good old sponge. I did pull a pretty much basic green, but a little bit lighter than the green that we have on the top of our cliffs. And then I'm gonna start patting this like that right on to my hand. It makes a perfect imprint of what would look like grass or mixed grass on the top of these cliffs. <laughs> All right guys, we're down to the wire now. This is the home stretch, okay? The next thing I'm gonna be doing before I finish off my waves and my ocean at the very bottom, I'm gonna go ahead and finish off my road. Now, if you were looking at our road, can you guess what's missing? I mean, seriously, the lines in the road, duh. So I need to put the lines in. So I'm actually just using a paint pen for that. So it is real paint, it comes out of a marker. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's not like it's some new invention. So let's put the lines in and then we can finally use our sponge that we were just using before to finish off our waves and the wave breaks at our coastline at the bottom of the canvas. So now what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be using our dabbing sponge right here with our little tiny bit of white that we've got and we're going to be pretty much doing our coastline however we see fit, guys. Just what I do is I go ahead and I, I'm dabbing the entire time for this, okay? So I'm, you know, doing, you know, my coastline and the outline of my coastline in whatever shape I want, okay, cool. Dab some more white on there. Do a little bit underneath that line that you did, you know, to really wherever you feel like you want. Keep doing that and you're gonna do that for the full length of the bottom of your coastline. That is it guys for episode one of Pain Therapy. Thank you so much for watching. You are a rock star. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I hope you guys have a fantastic day today. Have an amazing week. Make good choices. Do good things out there and make the most out of every minute. Stay smiling. This is Johnny. This is Pain Therapy and I'm signing off. See you guys next time.